Exposure. How do you get it right on the C100? Hello, Paul Campbell here, and this is an introductory talk on using zebras for exposure in video. For this, I'm using the Canon C100 cinema camera, and for the most part, I'm shooting in the wide DR profile. This is a hybrid profile, which achieves better dynamic range but does not require much, if any, post-processing, unlike Canon Log. In later videos, I'll be talking about the waveform monitor and using false color. Now let's begin. This is a bright, sunlit, outdoor scene, a fine spring day in Australia. The sky is blue, but it's pale in this image now because it's currently overexposed. I'm using the wide DR profile and I have four stops of neutral density filter using the inbuilt filters on the camera. This is necessary because we're shooting at 1 50th of a second and ISO 850. The lens is the cheap 28 to 80 millimeter kit lens. Now, first method, push auto iris. Let the camera do the work for you. Press and hold the Push Auto Iris button for a second or two to let it settle. Now a lot of the time this will be good enough for run and gun and might be all you have time for. But if you have the time, then you might want to preserve highlights and shoot to the right. Photographers are familiar with using f-stops to describe the light levels, but in video, we often use a scale that goes from 0 to 100% to describe the brightness of the image on the sensor. It's often referred to as the IRE scale. IRE stands for the Institute of Radio Engineers, and you can tell from that title that it's been around for a while. It was originally developed in the days of television video and is really obsolete in its original form but it remains useful as a simple way of talking about the brightness at the sensor, regardless of bit depth or sensor type. Now I'll talk about this scale more in a later video. Now, let's get back to exposing to the right or protecting the highlights. Zebras are the tool we use to tell us when we've gone too far to the right into overexposure. Let's configure zebras on the C100. Into the menu, and into the LCD submenu. Zebra 2 is a fixed level from 70% right up to 100%. We'll set the level at 100%. That will show us when there is overexposure in the image. Select Zebra 2 and ensure that zebras are turned on. Now right away, we can see the zebras, stripes, on the image. Note the camera will not record these, we can only see them on the display. Now let's ease back the aperture until the zebras disappear. Looks like F9. Though we can magnify the image for a better look. The red lines are focus peaking, which is set to turn on when magnification is on. Checking on the roof area, it looks like we can get away with F8. Now let's do that push auto iris again, see what it comes down to. And it comes down to F11. Light is changing at this time of day. The sky does look more blue at f11, but if the shadows are important, f8 is acceptable, or possibly desirable. If we have time, it's always useful to look at more than one assessment of exposure and make a creative decision. Now, having said that, the higher exposure is generally the better one and will allow for adjustment in post. You'll note that the higher exposure of F8 in this case has lower contrast, but the shadows are less dark. Now let's take a look 
at this indoor scene. The lens is now the 50mm f1.8. Again at this aperture it's well overexposed. Let's try push auto iris and get a reading. f5.6. Now let's use zebras to expose to the right as before. Into the menu, the LCD submenu, zebras, zebra 2, 100%, select zebra 2, turn zebras on. Escape out of the menu. Push the exposure up until the zebras appear, then ease back until they've gone. This gives us an aperture of 3.2, over a stop more than indicated by push auto iris and the image looks too bright. Now the range of brightness in this scene is fairly narrow. The skin tones are in fact the brightest tones in the frame. So let's look at another way of setting the exposure. Let's expose for skin tones. Now exactly where should skin tones be on the 0 to 100 scale? Well it depends on the skin and on the camera maker's profile and their recommendations. I'm using the YDR profile and Canon recommend that Caucasian skin should sit at around 55 to 60 percent on this profile. Now back in the menu, look at Zebra 1 this time. You can see that we can't pick a range below 65 percent, but we can work with that. Let's pick the 70 plus or minus 5 percent. So that gives us zebras for brightness levels from 65 to 75%. And then we can adjust exposure down until they just disappear. That'll give us the right uh, levels. Ensure that we have selected zebra 1. That zebras are on. Escape out of the menu. And adjust the exposure till we see zebras on the face. The bright part of the face. This gives us an aperture of 6.3. But if we want the zebras to disappear to set the skin tones down at 55 to 60 percent, then an aperture of 7.1 would be appropriate. Now this model is not real skin, although it has similar reflectance, but let's see what real skin, though somewhat damaged, looks like. Let's look at apertures of 5.6, 6.3, 7 7.1 and 8. This is 5.6. This is 6.3. This is 7.1. And this is F8. Now, that shooting for skin tones looks so very well. It's nice to have numbers to tell you what to do. However, that's for Caucasian skin. What about the other 80% of the world? Now don't come back at me about that 80%. Uh, that's just a number I plucked out of the air. The real number is probably much higher. Now what about this scene, for instance? Where would you place the skin tones here? Now it could be around 30% uh, or so, but that's just a guess. 
If you want any kind of consistency with your exposure, shooting for skin tones is probably not the way to go because of the huge variety of skin tones in the world. It's a guide if you've got nothing else, just as protecting the highlights is a guide. Often it's going to come down to a creative choice after evaluating all the numbers. In my next video, I'll look at other methods of obtaining exposure using the waveform monitor, gray cards, white cards, and even false colors. So I hope you have found something of value in this uh, video. Please do subscribe if you can find the time. It means a lot to me and it will ensure that you don't miss other videos in this series and other series that I have in the pipeline. This is Paul Campbell signing off until next time. Goodbye and may your God, if you have one, go with you.